Tom Hartman here with you, and so happy to be with you on this beautiful Friday. Well, it's actually kind of gray here in D.C., but still, you know, it's every day you wake up breathing is a good day. Uh, speaking of waking up breathing, the Montana House today, this was actually uh, a couple of days ago, and this was February 28th, on, you know, so earlier this week, the Montana House gave initial approval, that would be what, Monday, I think? gave uh, initial approval to a bill that would allow the state to execute doctors for writing a prescription to, uh, for aid in dying medication for terminally ill adults who, requi who requested it to peacefully end their suffering. It's called the HB 536. It passed the Montana House by a vote of 52 to 48. It was introduced by Brad Shinda, T S C H I. D.A. Shida uh, from Missoula. And uh, physician aid in dying is not a defense to a charge of homicide against the aiding physician, a maximum sentence of the death penalty and a minimum sentence of 10 years in prison. You know, we were talking last week about death with dignity. That's amazing. By the way, it's Anything Goes Friday. We have no guests today. Whatever you, you know, if there's anything on your mind that you'd like to talk about, whether it's... Uh, Lizard people? Are there lizard people in the White House? People who zip on their human suits every day? Oh, you didn't know about Sean Spicer speaking about zipping suits on? I just learned this this morning. Troy, Troy and Chris were like, you know, look, look at this story. Uh, Sean Spicer used to be the Easter Bunny on the White House lawn. There's a picture of the Easter Bunny with George W. Bush. It's Sean Spicer. Yes, seriously. In fact, there's a tweet. I retweeted a couple of tweets of it this morning. So, uh, you know, at least Sean Spicer zips on his Easter Bunny suit. But here's the question. Uh, you know, we used to speculate about Dick Cheney. You know, he doesn't have a heartbeat. I mean, what's the deal here? Does he zip on his human suit every day? Uh, this, of course, goes back to, uh, oh, what's the British conspiracy theorist's name? It's been a decade since I've even thought about the guy. David... Um, oh, it's one of those names that sounds like a different name. In any case, uh, who, who came up with this theory that uh, these lizard people live in the center of the earth and they come out periodically and they run society, right? They, they're they're, they're the, the, the secret rulers of the world. Well, say that again? Yeah, David Ickes. Or, uh, yeah, David, or David Ikes, I think yeah, is how he Ike. pronounces his I-K-E-S. Yeah. I'm not even sure he's still alive, but back, geez, must have been... 15 or 20 years ago, Louise and I went to this uh, conference in, in Los Angeles. It was like one of these new age conferences where they had all these different, you know, breakout sessions. And, and we walked into this room and I had at that point, I had no idea who David Ikes was and he was speaking. And, uh, you know, we walked into this room and sat down. There's maybe two, three hundred people in there. And he's going through the history of the Egyptian Empire and the building of the pyramids and then to the, to the Masons and the origins of the Masonic Order. And George Washington's inaugural address was a Masonic Day Parade. And I'm following along. I mean, it's really kind of fascinating world history about how, you know, the medieval guilds that came out of the out of the uh, the Renaissance, the 14th century. Uh, after the after the, the deaths of the Black Plague, those guilds became unions, and they became also the Masons, and they became secret societies, and all kinds of stuff. And then he starts talking about the lizard people, and everybody in the room, I'm looking at Louise, going, "Huh? Eh? What happened?" <laughs> and everybody in the room is going, "Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh." They're just following right along. Yep, oh, they, you know, and the, the, the lizard people have been, they set this stuff up way back, you know, thousands of years ago, and you can find the lizard people in the Bible and. And he's going through Eric Von Donneken's, uh, you know, Chariots of the Gods thing, if you're old enough to remember when that was a New York Times bestseller back in the 70s, I think it was. And, you know, it, it, it's got all these pictures of space aliens and whatnot, you know, that we find on archaeological sites. And, and, and so, anyhow, I'm not, I'm not saying I want to talk about that today, but what the heck? I think I just did. All right. A couple of things I wanted to share with you before we pick up your phone calls. Uh, this uh, uh, CBS San Francisco, this is the CBS San Francisco station, uh, sanfrancisco.cbslocal.com is the website. The headline, Cell Phone Radiation Exposure Fact Sheet Draft Released in Cal by, for California Health Officials. And it had been previously unpublished. It was just published. It was dated April 2014, but it never made it out. 
And uh, this guy sued the state. His name is Maskowitz. And uh, he sued the state to get this document. Joel Maskowitz, a PhD, uh, director of the Center for Family and Community Health at UC Berkeley School of Public Health. And the draft, the, the draft fact sheet, in the draft fact sheet, and I'm quoting here from the CBS site, state uh, health officials list the recommendations from members of the public who wish to reduce their exposure to the radiation emitted from cell, cell phones. They, they say, uh, used frequently and kept close to the head and body, cell phone, electro EMFs, that's a radiation, can affect nearby cells and tissues. The fact sheet also says, and I quote, EMFs can pass deeper into a child's brain than an adult's, and so they suggest parents limit their cell phone use to texting important calls and emergencies, and that you use speaker phones and headphones. Whoa. Seriously. Arkansas has introduced a bill to ban books by Howard Zinn, the author of A People's History of the United States, which is arguably, uh, you know, one of the best history books that I've ever read. I mean, it's just, but, uh, oh my God, we can't have a real history book, can we? And, you know, the, the stock market hit this 21,000, the Dow hit this 21,000 uh, uh, never before hit mark uh, yesterday, the day before. Oh, I guess it was the day before yesterday. And yesterday it kind of flattened out. And there's a lot of speculation about where is this going. And in I, I, this is the story yesterday I kept saying, I got an economic story I want to share. I never got to it. I want to share it with you today. This is from the Financial Times uh, day before yesterday. U.S. banks have hit the brakes on lending since Donald Trump's election in November. Now, you know, you go back to 2007 and you look at the anatomy of the crash and you see that there was there there was no shortage of warning signs and uh, in my mind the, the the biggest warning sign was the fact that there were ads running on radio and television number one for refi your home uh you know and get all the money out of your home which is not a good idea and it, but it was selling like crazy and number two for these seminars about how you can become a multimillionaire yourself using leverage and real estate so you buy a house and you mortgage the entire thing and you pull a little money out of the house and you buy another house and you basically become a landlord. And over time, you take that landlord money and you put it back into the houses to pay the mortgages and the mortgage, you know, and the houses become assets. And, you know, it's a, it's a great system that actually does work unless there's a crash coming. And uh, in fact, if, any, if anything, what it did was it fed the, the, the bubble that became the crash. So that, you know, that was back in 2007 when I started refusing to read those ads I, I was on a local radio station in Portland and and saying you know we had a, a mortgage company as an advertiser and I was like I'm not going to do it anymore because I think that this is a disaster waiting to happen and I don't think these people are behaving ethically and it turned out I was right uh, but not necessarily about those individual advertisers but just the industry in general so here's back to the Financial Times total outstanding bank loans have dipped for two consecutive months with declines in December and January, ever since the election. Uh, this is from uh, information that the Fed published day before yesterday. Uh, Rohit Arora, a co-founder of Biz2 Credit, which arranges loans for small businesses, says January was slow, February is slower. Political uncertainty has gone up so much since Trump came in. This is not a story you're going to hear on Fox News, but you can read it in the Financial Times. David Rosenberg, chief economist at Gluskin Scaff, said the recent lending data had sent a shiver up my spine. He said lending to commerce and industry have, quote, fallen off the cliff. The chief international economist at Deutsche Bank Securities, Thorsten Schlock, said, quote, I'm getting more and more questions from clients like this because people are beginning to pay attention. If everything's so great, why is credit growth slowing? And then toward the end of the article, uh, the, let's see, Alistair Gray in New York, who wrote the article for the Financial Times, says analysts said banks are now tightening underwriting standards, partly in response to rising delinquency levels. Another bad sign. The U.S. credit card default rate hit 3.21% last month, the highest level since January 2013. Residential mortgage loan growth was close to zero in November and December and declined seven-tenths of a percent last month, which again is what we saw just as the housing market started to burst in in early 2008 so you know some things to be concerned about i think so i think it's entirely possible so anyhow that said we'll take your calls whatever you'd like to talk about it's anything goes friday we'll pick up your calls right after this stick around
And yeah, we can talk about lizard people if you want. You know, it's, although, you think they're real? I mean, Dick Cheney made a good argument for it.